We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Plainview, Texas, as we visit with Marcos Inojos, who is heading into his second season as the head coach of the program, been a part of the Wayland Baptist program for a number of years. Coach, let's talk about year one then with you at the helm as, as you came in to an eight season. Uh, but talk a little bit about the year and, and what you saw from your first season as the head coach. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, Joey, for having me. I appreciate you covering uh, college athletics, college football, and 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 Wayland Baptist. So it was, uh, man. If I could, if I could go back and do some things differently, I would. Uh, if I were to talk to you about all of the adversity that we faced throughout that year, um, I would sound like I'm making excuses, and I don't live in a world of excuses. I I, I didn't get it done the way that we. Uh, expected to, uh, but we were we were highly competitive. The two and eight uh, season. Um, there's probably three or four ball games in there that were uh, very very close and could have gone either way, um, and we just didn't have enough in the tank to 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 get it done. Uh, so. Um, brought everybody back uh, for the spring. Uh, had a great. Uh, spring football uh, semester. Uh, our recruitment has been outstanding uh, from November to about mid-April. Uh, we we're we're over our number uh, in in commits. Uh, really excited about uh, mixing the two groups. Um, I think that. Uh, we've taken very many steps in, in changing the two and eight uh, and having enough gas in the tank to, to complete the season and complete ball games. So excited to see what we're what we're going to bring to the table. Uh, I, I changed our offensive staff. Uh, I've, I've I hired a new offensive coordinator, a guy that I coached against in high school. Um, have known for a very long time, very respected uh, football coach in the state of Texas, uh, Brian Wood, uh, hired him. He retired out of Burnett High School um, and uh, been trying to hire him for a while. And then everything just kind of fell into place. So it leads me to believe that it's it was a, a God thing and not a Marcos thing, which is important to me. Uh, and then my my son, who has who was the defensive coordinator last year and has been with me for a while now as a player and now as a coach as well, came to me in the offseason and said, hey, look, I want to go to the offensive side, a place where you haven't been because uh, I was the defensive coordinator before. He said, everything over here is what you put in place. And I want to go somewhere where I can make a, a difference uh, where I can call my own. And he asked if he could go to the offensive line, uh, which was a weakness for us in the in the uh, last year, really the few years. Um, and and he already has made a difference in recruitment uh, and, and excited to see what that offensive line is going to look like. And partnering him with Brian Wood is, is going to be pretty incredible, in my opinion. And then I hired, uh, as a running backs coach, a guy who played middle linebacker for me here, was an all-conference player, led the uh, conference in tackles. But I hired him as a running backs coach, not a linebacker coach. And his name is Casey Buck. And that really completes the offensive staff. Uh, really, really excited to see what they can do in the spring. We, we went head-to-head, -head and it was a lot of fun uh, to have – you know, those guys across the field from me and, and the other coaches. So really excited, Joey, to see what we're going to do this year differently. And it's encouraging sounding just to, to get to listen to you talk about it right off the bat, too. And, Coach, I've found, and, I, and I'm sure you have as well in, in our, our times here, that when it's a God thing, it winds up being a whole lot better than if it's a, a Marcos thing or a, or a Joey thing. So I agree with you entirely on that. It's That's nice to hear. When you talk about players returning, let's let's talk about your offense. Not only those who are returning, but some new faces, as you were talking about new staff, uh, maybe some new faces as well. Brian Ponder's returning for the team. Uh, talking about your offense a little bit, completed more than 50% of his passes last year. Tell us a little bit about your offense. 
yeah, uh, you know, right now we we ended the spring with with uh, the quarterback position as the most contested position, and Brian is definitely a, a leader in that group. Uh, there's two other guys that had a great uh, a spring as well, um, but but Brian coming off of uh, I believe it's 1,300 yards passing. Uh, and and has been a pretty good uh, quarterback for us throughout the years. He's a coach's kid, uh, a coach's son, um, and so he he's been around football his life. Uh, ne never a problem. Uh, always in class, good grades. Uh, kind of kid that you want around you. Um, and and so we're really excited to have him back it'll be his final year um wants to go into coaching afterwards so i know he's got a lot of motivation uh going into this year um and then right behind him is david guajardo who's been behind him for quite some time now we didn't name a starter uh meaning that they they both were neck and neck throughout the entire spring uh coach wood had just it's it's difficult in four weeks to determine which guy is the best. Uh, so he's going into fall camp with no named starter, and he's going to give that some time into that first ball game, and then we'll go from there. But uh, the the competition level has gotten a lot better. Um, we we recruited a, a, a junior college All American out of Hartnell uh, Junior College in California, and. He was ineligible last year, but is now eligible. And so that uh, really raised the level of competition to that position this past spring. So excited to see what that brings. All right, Coach. And, uh, you know, you were talking about changes to the, to the staff with uh, offensive line. Coach, how's your line looking coming in? Are there returners? And how are you building that, that part of the game? Yeah, so we're going to be a mixture of returners and, and, uh, and newcomers. We have three – uh, guys that have been with us for a while. Sam, Sam Zaccardo is a Lubbock Coronado uh, offensive uh, lineman that returns for his fifth year. Earlier we talked about a COVID year. He's He's got a COVID year, so he's going to uh, come back and finish. Uh, and and then we've got Marjone Rachel, who's probably uh, one of the most athletic offensive linemen that we have had. Um, and in Princeton race and both Marjom and Princeton out of the Houston area, those guys are returning. Um, and our, our top uh, offensive line commitments, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and name them, Julian Leva, Th uh, Thaddeus Hobbs, Anthony Maynard, Cameron Boatner, and Zanin Fletcher, uh, anywhere from Fort Stockton to Abilene to Houston, man, they're all over. Uh, great high school programs. Uh, Junior Marcos Jr. did a great job of recruiting these guys, uh, and we're going to have a battle at offensive line to determine who's going to uh, start. And uh, it'll be it'll be an ongoing process. Uh, some of those guys will come in and contest the guys that are returning. Uh, some of them will fill in the shoes right away. Uh, just a matter of fall camp to determine that. We're visiting now with Marcos Inojos Sr., who is the head football coach at Wayland Baptist here on Midwest Sportsnet, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel. It really does make a difference for us. Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, one of those returning for you is Harper Terry, a free safety for you, but uh, a converted free safety is. He's been able to, in his high school and college career, see both sides of the ball. Yes, sir. Uh, Harper Terry is that kind of leader that you want, the kind of kid that you want on your team. Uh, very intelligent football player, uh, quality character kid uh, out of Odessa Permian. And he, he went to Eastern New Mexico out of a high school to play quarterback. And, and then uh, when there was a coaching change, he came to us um, and we converted him into free safety. And he's done an excellent job. Uh, he... Uh -huh. Coming from the offensive side, he his weakness was in tackling. He didn't did particularly like tackling, uh, but he's gotten better. He's worked on it, uh, and so uh, excited to see him play his last uh, season with us. Uh, another kid that wants to go into coaching, uh, so uh, excited to see him. And coach, there are going to be some new faces on defense. A, a number of the, the players that saw time for you last year have 
I've moved on graduation, you know, eligibility done for a while. So uh, are, are the fans going to need to you know, watch their programs pretty well? Yeah, so we've we've got two defensive linemen that are returning. Uh, one was a freshman, true freshman that played, and, and one is a sophomore. So we're going to be very young at the uh, defensive line. But Tybra Hollings out of out of Houston and uh, Antonio Jones Jr. Um, those two guys, one a defensive tackle, one a defensive end, uh, will will bring some um, normality, I think, in in at the defensive line. Uh, and, but then we're really looking forward to seeing uh, Nicholas Goins, uh, Tristan Lee, uh, Davion Wallace, Lewis Calderon, and Antonio Williams. Uh, those are the guys that we have coming in that we think uh, will will make a splash in this conference. However, they're going to be young, so there's going to be some growth expected. Um, and at the linebacker position, we've got some sophomores uh, that have been with us uh, for a while, and then one senior. Uh, seniors Ryan Barnett out of Tascosa. Mason Dickinson will be in the middle. He's out of Abilene High. And then Isaiah Brooks, who's out of uh, Little M. Both, both of those two guys are guys that have been in our system behind some of the best linebackers that we have had, just waiting for an opportunity, and this is it. And it's finally there. And we also have a uh, strong safety by the name of Donovan Henry, who is one of those success stories who came in as a walk on uh, and slowly moved up into a starting role and has not relinquished it. And really excited to see that guy play. Earned himself a scholarship. Uh, and I, I believe he'll be somebody that'll earn all conference honors. Mm -hmm. Those, those are the fun stories, Coach. Those are the ones you like to hear. I, I appreciate you sharing that. On special teams, Leo Mourinho, a player from Brazil. He was 13 of 18 field goals last year. He comes back for the 24 season. Yes, sir. Excited to see him. He This will be his last season also. He's actually a soccer player that uh, went to junior college and, and, and played soccer and football, but came here to just play soccer and – uh, decided it was time to get get back into football, and we're pretty glad that he did. He uh, believe it was a 52 yard field goal that he kicked uh, against the wind in Fort Worth against Texas Wesleyan, um, and so he's got a lot of potential. Um, was injured early in the in the year last year, uh, so uh, he's he's healthy now. Has had a great summer. Really excited to see what he can do. And then our punter is also a senior, a transfer out of w, West Texas A&M, uh, Braden Welch. Uh, and so that 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 kid has a heck, heck of a leg. Uh, his hang time is incredible, and he does a great job of placing it. So excited to see him. Coach, the season gets underway in August, August 31st, and you start the year with three consecutive road games. So it's, uh, I'm sure interesting to travel from West Texas as it is, but you're going to make sure you get the opportunity to do so on the road at Panhandle State. So heading up the Panhandle uh, to the Oklahoma side of the border there on August 31st, season gets underway, then to the Houston area of North America in the next week. And then the next week, traveling south over, I mean, you know, I, I thought y'all were in West Texas, but you go mm -hmm. even a little bit farther west. Uh, we're to take on Sol Ross State, a Division Three program, now transitioning to Division Two in the Lone Star Conference where you finally get to come home, and that'll be after a bye week taking on Louisiana Christian. First home game September 28th uh, as the Wildcats come to town. Tell us a little bit about your opening to your season. Yeah, so there, there, there's not an easy opponent in our conference and on our schedule. I mean, we're, we're – uh, uh, every week's going to be tough. Uh, it's bad enough that you have to start on the road, but then you have, you have to start on the road uh, in a conference ball game, the very first rattle out of the box. Uh, and, a, and a very much improved o OPSU with Coach Miller uh, second year there as well. Um, you know, we, we start the season traveling. We end the season traveling. Uh, and, and the first two home games are uh, the, the conference uh, uh, champion and the, uh, the, the other team that tied three-way tie for a conference championship right off the bat. So uh, we've, got, we've got no time to mess around. We've got to get to work. Got to have a, a great fall camp. Uh, but, but 
you know, we're, we're up for the challenge. Excited to see that. Well, Coach, we're very thankful that you took some time with us today to talk about the Pioneers heading into 2024. Coach Marcos Inojo Sr. heading into his second season as the head coach for Wayland Baptist. Coach, we'll follow the Pioneers this season, and we're very thankful for your time today, sir. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate you very much.